cooking like a man. Tonight, we're having buffalo hot wings for dinner. My name is J.D. Fenders, and welcome to my kitchen. Here in just a second, I'll show you the ingredients. You'll need some chicken wings naturally. I brined these uh, in kosher salt overnight, and my wife, she likes the uh, <clears throat> chicken fingers, so I also got some chicken tenders right here that I'll be uh, making some chicken fingers for her tonight. You're gonna need a little black pepper, some flour, and some wing sauce. A couple of uh, bacon pans, and a deep fat fryer. Here in just a second, I'll show you how to throw this together. Hello, I'm back. Well, the first thing you're gonna have to do is uh, prep your wings. So. I'll, I'll do one complete wing for you, then I'll let you go and get the rest of them ready and, and get back with you after a little while so you don't have to watch me get all these wings ready. But all you have to do is the first thing I do is I find the joint and I cut the wing tip off. And we'll just discard the wing tip. And then find the joint between the drumlet and the wing and just push your knife through it. Cut it too. There you go. You got two pieces of the drummy and the wing. So then I just uh, roll that in the flour, get it coated well, and place it on a baking sheet. In about 20 or 30 minutes, I'll let these sit with the flour on them. In about 20 or 30 minutes, I'll dredge them one more time. I always dredge my fried chicken twice after it sits there and rests on the chicken for a while. And uh, that's it for right now. The flour, I just, right now I put just one cup, one heaping cup of flour in there, about a teaspoon of black pepper, and I uh, whisked it together real good. And that's all you need. You don't need salt if you brine it all night. If you didn't brine your chicken, you'd wanna salt your chicken before you dredge it. I'll get back with you here in a minute after I get all this ready. You can take a look at it. Oh, hello everybody, I'm back. Okay, I've got my chicken dredged for the first time. It's in here resting now. Got another about a half a cup of flour I added to my mixture with a little more black pepper so I could dredge it one more time before I put it in the deep fat fryer. Also, I turned my oven on to uh, just warm because I'm gonna be frying a lot of stuff tonight. I could put my stuff that's already been fried on a, on a sheet pan and put it in the oven so it stays warm till everything else gets done. And my deep fat fryer I've got set to 375 degrees. It'll take about 10 minutes to cook a chicken wing or a tender. And so it's uh, in the process of getting hot right now. So we're not too far away from getting started. I'll check in with you in a little bit. Hello, I'm back. Well, the deep fat fryer just uh, told me the oil's hot enough now. So I'm gonna go ahead and dredge these uh, wings one more time before I start frying them. It was probably pretty close to 20 minutes that uh, it took the oil to get hot. Just a couple other things I wanted to mention uh, while I was doing this was you're gonna need a pretty good size mixing bowl. Got one right here. I'm gonna use that in a little bit to toss the wings in when they get done. And so if you don't have a lot of a variety of mixing bowls in your kitchen, I highly recommend that. They're, I buy mine, none of mine are high dollar. I uh, bought them at different department stores, but I never spent a lot of money on them, didn't get them from a restaurant supply or nothing. But having a wide variety of sizes of mixing bowls in the kitchen is just pretty priceless. I mean, I use mine all the time for everything. My mixing bowls get used every day. Uh, and then lastly, before I let you go, um, on, your, on your sauce, as you probably already know, there's a, you could use all kinds of sauces to toss your uh, chicken wings in, or you could just have them naked. But uh, I really like Texas Pete, uh, like I've mentioned in the past, Texas Pete hot sauce. 
And I used to make my own uh, wing sauce by mixing Texas peat with butter, milk drawn butter. But um, there's a recipe here on the back of the Texas peat uh, label, in fact, for that. But since then, Texas peat has come out with a, a pre-prepared wing sauce that I really like. So I don't go to the trouble of making my own anymore. I just buy the Texas peat wing sauce. But you can experiment and there's all kinds of, of uh, recipes online for teriyaki or uh, you know sweet sweet sauces or whatever you like. So for that, I, but I like the traditional Buffalo hot wing, from Buffalo, New York. They're, I like them the best. And the Texas peat, I wouldn't consider to be overwhelmingly hot. It's a, so it's not like nuclear or anything. And I think most people could tolerate it. And as you probably already also know that there's several condiments that you could use with your chicken wings. Um, you could use blue cheese dressing, ranch dressing. A lot of people cut up uh, celery sticks to help kind of counter the heat when they're eating them. Uh, which I do that sometimes too, but for tonight, I'm just having my chicken wings, just chicken wings. I'm not gonna bother with any of the condiments. I don't even need the blue cheese dressing or the ranch dressing. I like it sometimes, but I, I like, mostly I like just having the full flavor of the wing sauce and uh, enjoy the uh, chicken wings a little plain without all that other stuff. But, um, you know, and there's a lot of restaurants that really do wings well. That's one of the few things I really don't mind going out to get at a restaurant or a pub. A lot of places really do them well. But if you take your time to do them at home, it's cheaper. And any restaurant would be hard pressed to do them as good as you could do them at home if you take the time to do it right. Uh, and there's uh, some people prefer to bake their wings as opposed to frying. And that's okay too, it's maybe slightly healthier. But I think they're better fried. So here goes the wife's chicken fingers in for one more coating of flour. And I'll meet you here in just a minute and we'll throw them in the deep fat fryer. Well, hello everybody. I'm back. Now we're ready to get some of these wings going down in here. I'm gonna put a, a stack in the bottom of the basket. And then I'm going to drop them. And once they're uh, dropped, I'll add a few more in on top. But what that'll do by putting them in in that order will help to keep them from sticking together. So down they go. There goes one bunch. And then I can drop a few more in on top. I have a lot of stuff to fry it now. I'm going to try to get as much in my basket as I can so that I don't run out of time or I'm not here all night frying stuff. There we go, I think I got a pretty full basket. That's all it'll handle. I'll catch you here in about 10 minutes and show you what it looks like. Hey everybody, I'm back. Well, these uh, these first batch of wings are ready to come out of the basket fryer, so I'll get them out and show you what they look like. That's the golden brown. If you don't have a deep fat fryer like this one, a basket fryer, that's okay, you can use a frying pan. But man, this is so nice. Uh, I highly recommend it. They're not terribly expensive to make a good Christmas present or a birthday present. And what I particularly like about this model is it filters the oil. So when I'm done and the oil cools off, I can put that over the filter and it'll filter and store the oil for me. Uh, and I really like that because I can get, depending on what I'm frying, I could get three or four uses out of the oil before I have to discard it and put fresh oil in it. So that's a real money saver. And the uh, if you do hardly any frying at all, the uh, the machine will pay itself off uh, pretty quick by just by the amount of oil that you save. Um, so these are really great. And what's best about them is, is they maintain the frying temperature, which is the hardest thing to do in a frying pan on top of the stove. 
Yeah, but here we go. I'm going to dump these out to my oven and start another batch. I'll catch you in a little while. You know, I'm back here, buddy. Well, it's time to throw the next batch out of the fryer. So I'm getting these out of the oven. They're staying in there. Nice and warm. This time I turned my hood fan off so you can actually hear what I'm saying. There they are. Nice and brown. I'm going to drain just a little bit. Put them in the oven. I wanted to uh, bring you back so that I could show you something about arranging the uh, next batch. Okay, I've only got four little wings to add in there. So I'll go ahead and put them in the bottom. If you alternate the drummies like that, bone side, bone side to meat side like that, you'll get more in there. But what I was thinking, and the reason why I brought you back, is that I think that I could get all the rest of this chicken in there in one last batch. So I want to try. Go ahead and drop the wings. But um, on the chicken fingers, you want to drop them from the top. Just gently put them in there. Don't burn yourself. That way they don't stick together. If you put them all in the basket and dump them, they could come out one big chicken finger. Let's see if we can get them all in there. We can. That'll save me a little time. We give that basket a shake. They'll work themselves down in there. One more left. I think I can make it. I'll put it to the side. There we go. Give it a little shake. There we go. It's all under the wall now. And I'll continue to kind of give the basket a little shake. I'll see you in about 10 minutes. Well, you can't have a fried food extravaganza without uh, dropping some fried oats. I'm going to drop the french fries too. I'll see y'all in a little bit. Okay, I'm back. This okra is ready to come out. I'm going to toss in some french fries. I always just buy the frozen already breaded okra. It's good. Probably better than I can make it anyway. I like it. There's the okra. Now normally, nine times out of ten, cut my own french fries. But I had some frozen fries in the freezer. So I don't use them up. So I'm gonna drop some french fries. Not a whole lot because I don't eat them. My wife, my wife, I might have one or two, but since I'm diabetic, they're really not the best thing to eat for me to have. So down we go. Look at all that chicken and open. I'm going to have fun in that. Hello, I'm back. Now comes the fun part. We get to toss some wings. So you just take a large mixing bowl. I'm going to start off with about a half a bottle of this pre-prepared Texas Pete wing sauce. I can always add more in the mixing bowl if I need to, but if I don't dump it all in there right off the bat and I don't use it all, I can save it for next time. So, just drop some wings in there, about a half a dozen at a time, maybe 10, it's a pretty big mixing bowl. Then just give it a toss. Make sure each piece gets evenly well coated. I'm grab my tongs. Let's see what they look like. You won't find any better at any restaurant anywhere than what you can make right at home. Like I said, there's a lot of restaurants that make some good ones, but you can make them good right there at the house. See you on the next video. All right.